Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now AMD's AFMF2 or Fluid Motion Frames 2 is out now as part of the latest preview driver and just like the first iteration of the software it can be enabled at driver level. It's essentially frame generation across the board. You don't have to have it implemented in a game. If a game doesn't have FSR frame gen then you could just enable this instead. Of course while it should work with most titles you still need to have a compatible 6000 or 7000 series GPU or CPU with integration graphics like the 8700G and Radeon 780M for example. Now I'm no expert when it comes to this tech, give me proper out of the box frames any day, but I'm not ignorant to the fact that loads of people will want to use it and it will be very helpful in some cases. It's cool to see AMD actually using the aforementioned 8700G and 780M as an example as part of a CS2 test which is focusing on what I think is one of the most notable changes here, improved latency or lower latency, however you want to word it. I'd still probably avoid using frame gen with fast paced online competitive titles and the guide within the Radeon software says as much. It also says it's best suited to games running at over 60 FPS to begin with. The 780M iGPU can't always manage this and enabling AFMF2 in a game that's running at say 45 FPS might feel a little choppy. Maybe I'm just super sensitive to it or something, but I felt a little motion sick in The Witcher 3 here, at least until I enabled FSR as well to increase that base FPS to close to 60. Now one such game that has no issues with hitting well over 60 frames per second at respectable settings with no discrete graphics card is GTA 5. This will actually hit over 80 frames per second a lot of the time and while it's certainly more than playable I wondered how fluid motion frames 2 would feel here. While I'm using a fairly old monitor for this test it is 120 hertz so I should be able to tell if this feels any different. Now to enable it we need to of course install the preview drivers which I'll leave a link to and then hit Alt R to open up the Radeon software. This will be the default key binding and then we need to find fluid motion frames too. The indicator will read active after toggling it and for simplicity's sake I'll leave the search and performance modes at auto. To be honest I'm no frame gen expert and I read that the software will choose the best settings based on your hardware. I'd actually recommend checking out a longer video by Ancient Gameplays if you want to know more of the ins and outs of this software. Some great AMD content over there to be honest. I'll leave a link again below. Now third party overlays can't pick up on the frame gen generated frames so we actually need to use AMD's built in overlay which will tell us all we need to know. As you can see we're running at about 70 to 80 FPS most of the time or at least we were before enabling AFMF2. According to the AMD overlay however our hardware is hitting at least 150 FPS on occasion. It certainly seems smoother this time around not that it felt um, unsmooth before. We also have the latency in the top left as well with the figure increasing or decreasing depending on our frame rate of course. It tends to move around between 8 and 12 milliseconds so no complaints in this single player title. I read that this works with Vulkan and OpenGL now as well which made me think about emulation. It could be advantageous in certain cases there but I'm getting distracted. From my limited initial experience, GTA 5 here feels great to play. It definitely seems like an improvement over the older version from what I remember, but I do want to finish on a couple of not so great points. One isn't that major at all really, just some glitches and artifacts that I saw when scrolling through the settings menu. It certainly reminded me that I had this feature enabled, put it that way. The other issue was crashing. I got a couple of driver timeouts which was quite strange, all of a sudden I started getting a few intermittent but large frame spikes and it was only when I alt tabbed to the desktop I noticed that this message had popped up. Not sure if this is because it's a preview driver or an issue with my system, maybe just the 780M but I thought it was worth mentioning. If you want me to test more games let me know but I wanted to give you my initial thoughts and impressions. If you're gaming at 60 FPS or close to it to be honest. Um, with a lower end or entry level card and you want to see if you can smooth things out or gain the perception that things are smoothed out I guess then this is definitely worth trying for sure. I mean it's free after all. I can imagine cars like the 6500 XT really benefiting from this as well, maybe combined with FSR to bump the frame rate up a bit.
I've said it before, but I'll say it again, I prefer standard, old-fashioned frames all day long. I just worry that some developers will abandon all optimization efforts in favour of relying on tech like this to fix, air quotes, their poorly optimised games. That said, I can appreciate this feature at a surface level for sure, and if it helps people out then, yeah, I can't argue with that. It is pretty cool to see a frame rate counter that reads like 150 FPS when you're using nothing but the CPU's integrated graphics. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching, leave your thoughts down below and I'll see you next time.